welcome back to another workbench. Today we're taking a look at the socket set. So you might be saying, just the socket set. What's up with it? This is a snap-on socket set from 8 to 19 millimeters, no skips. If we look at the end here, this is the brand new for 2018 FDX socket set. So there's been a little bit of uh, hype about these. Some people think they're overrated. Some people think they're just overpriced. There's nothing new about them. Um, if you've ever been on a snap-on truck lately, maybe you've seen the little demo that they've got on the truck. I know a lot of trucks are, these appear to be in somewhat short supply these days. Uh, this is a 3 8 metric. There is also a quarter inset that just came out here for Christmas 2018, or fourth quarter 2018, whatever you want to call it. And so what you get with this is a set from 8 to 19 with no skips, which is great. And you get this magnetic holder case. You can see, maybe you see the magnet there at the bottom. And this comes all sealed up here if you get it from your snap-on guy just right. And so if you take the shrink wrap off, let's take a look at these sockets. These are available in both standard and metric, as well as shallow and deep. I just went with a shallow set, but maybe you'd be interested in the deep set. Uh, a set of these sockets off the truck runs a, just a touch over $200 with tax. And so that is kind of steep for what these are. But the demo on the truck is kind of interesting how it shows some rounded off fasteners and how this can grab like no other fastener can. So let's take the case off here. Inside the box here we've got... Warning, made in USA, and this is also covered by a very specific patent that I'll get into in, a, in another video. So if you wanna learn more about this patent, stay tuned and subscribe, and I've got a video coming up all about the details of the patent related to these sockets here. And so this goes over a few little details here that this is the flank drive extra FDX is designed to grip fasteners with the angled corners of uh, the socket wall delivering higher strength and 50% more turning power on damaged fasteners. Manufactured from special alloy, nickel chrome finish, and optimally grooved wall helps improve socket removal and incorporates large identifying markings. So, okay, with that out of the way, we've got our little tray here. It's kind of like your other trays here. And if this is right here, because it's magnetic, flip it upside down, hold your sockets in place so you can drop that right into your toolbox. And you've got an organizer custom fit for this. And so here is, uh, let's go for the 10 millimeter, just for reference here, here's a 10 millimeter. If you look at this here, you can see there's a large 10 on it. These are marked made in USA, obviously. And then there's the part number for the socket. These are all six point sockets. And one of the things that I think is interesting, it seems like these are advertised for removing damaged fasteners. There's not been a lot of discussion if these are for everyday use. I don't think they are, but I don't necessarily see any reason why it would necessarily be bad. Maybe just be careful what you're using on it. This magnet has a nice little bit of pull to it. And so one of the things that's nice is that there's no skips on this. There's a nice way you can grip these with your fingers here to be able to pull them up. And with that visible number there, it'd be nice if that had a little bit of uh, some color to it, but not a big deal. Keep your stuff organized and you can find what you're looking for or put it on to have perhaps a, a Hanson tray or just keep them in order like this and it'll make it easy. So now the big question is, do these actually work? I think that's at the end of the day. If you're going to pay about 200 bucks for a handful of sockets, that you've already owned sockets in those sizes, the question is, do they actually work or is it a waste of money? So that's what we want to find out today. And so here we're taking a look at the 10 millimeter socket. All right, here we go. Here's our 10 millimeter FDX. Now let's look at this side by side. I've got a brand new flank drive socket here from Snap-on. This is a 10 millimeter uh, semi-deep not been used, just for reference, if we look at these side by side, you can see the FDX has everything imprinted or kind of in this little recess groove, whereas the regular socket here, it's got more of a flush side, and the grooves denoting as metric are a little more obvious. You can still see some of that grooving here on the FDX on the right. 
Obviously this one is longer because it's semi-deep. As of now, there are no semi-deep versions of the FDX. I think if they were, if there were a semi-deep version, I might have got that instead of the shallow, uh, so, and then have that as my primary set of semi-deeps, which I don't really have a full set. I just bought this 10 millimeters as my first semi-deep. Haven't used it yet, and I've been saving it for today to do this video. So, let's take a look at what we've got. And then just for comparison, to be pitting this against a couple other sockets here, I've got a made in USA 10 millimeter Craftsman. Uh, I believe it's actually made by Armstrong or Apex Tool Group. And then I've also got a Master Force made in USA 12 point 10 millimeter socket. I don't really use 12 points that often, but I just want to use this as a point of comparison. This is also made by Armstrong or Apex, so both of these should be made by the same manufacturer, uh, even though one's Craftsman and one is Master Force or your Menard store brand. Incidentally, if you're looking for a made in USA, Master Force sockets. Uh, I just made a video about those. They're on clearance now at Menards. Go get them. And otherwise they'll be gone before too long or else you'll be having to pay snap-on prices for sockets. So let's take a look and see what we've got. So now I'm gonna cut to some quick footage here of me preparing these bolts with my die grinder and making a mess with that. And then we'll take a look at the sockets in action. So after using the die grinder, I've got this one here that I've really boogered up. So this one I've boogered up less, but I uh, did this not uh, on here. I did this on its side and got this a little more rounded and evenly around. And this is a brand new untouched bolt. So with our first test, before we do anything, I'm just going to loosely put this on. This is a 12 point master force socket. A little bit of turn on the untouched bolt on this one here. This spins almost freely to the hand. And on this one, no force required at all, spins with no problem. Let's go on to a six point. This is the six point Craftsman made in USA. Pretty good hold, turns just a little bit. Be nice if that were a little tighter. So then on this one here, it actually grabs, well, it turns. Just a little more than the original. And then on this really boogered up one, this still spins with only a minimal more effort. So that turns, but let's see how well it'll hold if I put a socket on it. Ah, it looks like it's holding there, but it's kind of jammy when I go to pull it off. 12 point, no dice, and that spins right off. So now we'll take a look at our semi-deep snap-on. This is a brand new socket, never used it. It has a nice hold on the untouched bolt. This turns quite a bit. This is a 6.1, just for comparison. Now in this case here, this, yep. I feel like the snap-on one here is catching it. Maybe only slightly better than this used Craftsman one. And then on this one here, it's all boogered up. This 
is catching it just a little. You can see the six point craftsman, no dice. Six point untouched snap on, non FDX. But if I put a ratchet on it, and it does nothing, it just turns. So as you can see, with just a minimal, minimal bit of extra effort, it can, the ratchet can still spin the six-point snap-on. So now, here comes the FDX, and let's see what this does. So this socket here on the Virgin untouched bolt, it's a much tighter fit. Remember, these are six-point. Now for this rounded one at the 12.1, had no luck on. But the six-point bit, that bit's fine. And now for this really boogered up one that the, even the six-point snap-on couldn't remove, let's see if this one can do it. So I'm just going to be using just the stubby uh, 3 8 ratchet. And then I've got this six-point uh, wrench I'm going to go on the underneath and the bottom. The bolt on the bottom is just fine. Now let's see if this can actually remove this. Unfortunately, it looks like this is actually coming up short as well. So even though it's grabbing, I can definitely feel it holding more on it, but it's just not able to turn that off. These were just made just uh, tight plus maybe about a half a turn. I should have probably put a torque wrench on it, but I didn't. Let's just try this again with the six point semi deep untouched regular six point and no dice. Again, may have just rubbed off a little more metal with it. No dice. Six point, this is definitely holding more, as you can see. When I go to turn it, it's definitely catching, as opposed to the six point semi deep that just spins now on this one. This is catching, but I must have rounded this just enough that even though it's catching and a little bit tighter, it's not working. And just so you can see, here's my 10 millimeter one here. Now, maybe I ground off too much. Let's try going down to a nine, since this is no skips. See if that does anything. That nine still not doing it. I feel like I was a little closer with the nine. I feel like I could tighten this up a little bit here, but let's. It's definitely biting more, but it doesn't seem to want to be able to remove it. So I can definitely see where these are probably an advantage for slightly rounded fasteners, but for ones that have been boogered up really bad, even apparently going down a size did me no good. Now I wonder if I had the SAE and I could try to find something in between, if that would get me anywhere. Sometimes it's a shot in the dark, 
But at this point, it looks like my only option is to use a turbo socket and then just tap that on with a hammer and then try to beat it off that way because this is just not wanting to come. This is just spinning. Sorry if my microphone cord's getting in the way there. Let me see if I can fix that. And we're getting nowhere with that. Come over here to this one here. And that easily un that's easily undone, no problem. We'll tighten that back up with the FDX. Let's see if we can do that. No problem. No problem, just works just like you'd expect it to. Definitely tighter coming off. And so let's one last time show this on the untouched fastener. And you can see the turn there. Now let's compare that to the six point Made in USA Craftsman. Definitely has, feels like that's got more play in it. And the Snap-on. And they're still playing it, but this is definitely tighter and harder to remove. I think that spiral geometry definitely is playing into that. Little, um, so in conclusion, I've got to say I'm disappointed that I couldn't pass my test here. It's interesting that this is actually pretty consistent with what uh, the Snap-on Tool Review guy, Joel, showed in one of his videos talking about these FDX sockets as well. And his didn't really pass muster either for getting a really damaged or boogered uh, up socket or uh, bolt loose. I'll put a little card up to his video as well if you're interested. But unfortunately, this is just not doing it. I mean, it definitely bites into this bolt that a 12.1 wouldn't get. And so that's good, but that's no better than a 6 point. We'll grab that too. Let me just show the 6 point snap on grabbing it. See, no problem there. So even though a 12 point won't work there, a 6 point no problem. I can still tighten that down. The six point regular one definitely comes off that easier than what the FDX one did, but that's okay. I've got a feeling just based on the geometry here, if I could get deeper onto this bolt head, this would do better. Just based on the way that this is kind of designed with a spiral, the deeper you go, that if it, uh, you had more room and this were deeper and it was offset with a way to go on that head farther, I think it might stand a better chance, but unfortunately today I've got to say that that's a bit of a fail and a bit of a disappointment. I don't think I'm going to get rid of the socket set, but this might be my last chance that I'd use before I would go to a turbo socket to remove something, and in this case here today, looks like it would call for the turbo socket. So, not sure what to make of that. Maybe I just wasted 200 bucks on these sockets. You tell me in the comment section below if you've had more success with these than I have, and have a great day. Bye.